So now we have to move to the last presentation of the session uh, from Professor George Church. He's working at Harvard Medical School in Boston, and he will talk about reducing the immunogenicity of AV through engineering the vector. Great. Uh, <clears throat> this is my conflict of interest slide, and <laughs> we'll be talking about engineering AAV. Uh, we do a lot of work on payloads. Today we're talking about the vector itself, and in particular we want to reduce immunogenicity. We can not only do that by evading neutralizing antibodies, uh, obviously, but also by improving the on-target and off-target uh, focusing. I'll show you two uh, novel, unpublished ways of, ad of addressing uh, both the, all of the things uh, at the top of this list, plus the second one addressing reducing the inflammation that can result in a whole variety of Im immunological responses. And we do this via a TLR9 uh, inhibitory single-strand DNA motif. So I think AAVs are uh, a good vector, obviously, an efficient one, but there's plenty of room for improvement. For example, we're not nearly, as far as I know, anyone is near a vector delivery that's close to uh, the wild type of, of viral particle itself, off by about a factor of 100 um, in this uh, article. So what we are doing is, uh, in phase one of this talk, we're systematically engineering AAV capsids through multiplexing. And what we mean by that is that we can uh, synthesize large libraries that have been intentionally created, not randomly mutagenized. We go through selection, and then we do DNA sequencing to see uh, what comes out. So essentially the multiplexing is the beginning, uh, middle, and end. And then we can go through a cycle of machine learning. This is advanced uh, artificial intelligence derived uh, methodology where we can learn from the multiplex it cycle before that and do better at sequencing. Sorry, at synthesis in the next round. And this is because the exponentials, this is factors of 10 on the y-axis, we've had a 10 million fold improvement due to this process of multiplexing. And so here we're applying it to a new, not just reading and writing DNA, but use, using it to evolve better vectors. We can do both a wide search where we essentially make every possible single mutation, but we can also do a deep search where we use that wide search to inform uh, our progress and make more mutations than you could by any other mutagenic method. So here's the, the setup for the wide search. Um, we, we can look through every every position, in this case 735 positions, all possible substitutions, insertions, and deletions at these, at these uh, in, in terms of codons, and we can um, see the impact where red is, is uh, deleterious and blue tends to be more conserved regions that are more resistant, uh, sorry, where red is uh, flexible. And so here's seeing the, the three-dimensional structure of the capsid see from the inside on the left and from the outside on the right, and the red ones are the places where we can uh, accept variation. And we can use this in a variety of selections, and you'll see a few. This is the first one where we're selecting with a, a A20 antibody, um, and, and this, the selection for binding that in or not binding that antibody corresponds uh, very closely to the um, positions of the epitopes seen in cryo-EM uh, data. We can also map this for tropism, so not just antibody binding, but which, which uh, tissue it goes to, and we can do this by, in a multiplex way, looking at all the tissues simultaneously. We take a large pool of viruses that have been, uh, that are marked by the mutations that they have, and, and then dissect out each of the tissues, and then look for which positions, which codons are, um, result in, in tropism to the different uh, tissues. If you want more about this, there'll be a talk uh, uh, by Pierce Ogden, who did this, did this work later today. So then, we, now we take that, ba that background wide search and we do a deep search where we use machine learning to inform where we're going to go. And why is this deep search important? It's because the, this whole space between uh, the, of the vectors that we currently use, there's this huge distance of up to 300 mutations between common serotypes um, 
but the exploration in the past has been limited to one to four mutations. We would like to explore a much bigger space um, where we can mutate, um, use the information for single point mutations to really uh, expand out by dozens of mutations at a time. And, and the results of this uh, which, uh, is that we can get easily 10 to 15 mutations away from wild type um, and so we can get as dissimilar as 50 to 60 percent similarity in the library region, the region we're exploring. So here is the random library which is, uh, you know, a, uh, either a low probability of packaging or a short distance from wild type typically with a deep search we can go with deep learning. Um, further and further out and still retain very high probability of packaging. Now packaging is not all we're interested in, we're also interested in this tissue tropism and so this is showing, the, uh, comparing the, the, uh, the amount of delivery we get to say kidney and liver uh, versus spleen um, as a function of whether it's a deep search or random search or single search and you can see this great expansion of uh, our, our knowledge of tropism and if you want to see more about this, uh, Eric Kelsig is talking on Thursday. So we can use these together for uh, a a optimization and then uh, and, uh, that optimization results in better on target and, and lower off target and lower immunity. Um, so these are the, the people who did the work, uh, Pierce, Eric and Sam. And again, uh, I urge you to go to the more detailed talks. Now, I want to transition from this uh, very talented uh, group working on uh, machine learning to, uh, to a more targeted uh, hypothesis-driven uh, reduction in inflammation and innate immunity in, in AAV, which uh, Kai Chan and Tina Liu have uh, spearheaded. And this is, uh, hopefully, all of you are familiar with uh, AAV being uh, slightly imperfect in the clinic. Uh, here's a, a case study with hemophilia uh, trials uh, where as a function various dosages, uh, um, various trials um, and the level of uh, ALT and AST are, are not zero in general. This is something that we want to address. We want to uh, deal with uh, not just the target tissue, but the but off-target tissue, like the immune cells in particular, because if it gets into immune cells and starts an inflammatory response due to innate immunity, that ultimately results in <clears throat> both antibody and, and cell-mediated immunity, which is uh, going to uh, be con counterproductive for the sort of things we want to do. So we want to focus in on this inflammatory stage, where a DNA motif, say a CPG, uh, uh, dinucleotide or various other motifs can cause uh, in the endosome the TLR9 receptor to recognize the DNA itself and many other things are recognized by this innate immunity but let's just focus on uh, this particular receptor and it's recruiting of many of these other factors to re resulting in uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines ultimately and uh, undermining your uh, therapeutic uh, delivery. Now this is not news, hopefully, to, to many of you. This is well documented, this AV immune response. Even though it is among the best vectors, there still is room for improvement. And I don't, I don't want to go through all of these um, studies. But uh, the question is, can we engineer this vector um, to prevent these innate immune response? So our wish list, your wish list, hopefully, is to act as upstream as possible uh, to avoid inf uh, triggering this innate uh, immune inflammatory response. We want to be um, very specific in this. We want to avoid uh, broad spectrum immune suppression. We want to have it very targeted for the, exactly the thing that the AV might be uh, tangled up in. And we want to make this compatible with all sorts of AAV capsids, for example, the ones in the first half of the talk. And we want to avoid uh, uh, any other changes in the vector. Now here's an example where you can put in uh, a ligonucleotide here uh, on the far left which might contain a motif like CPG which triggers this uh, innate immune response 
And then we can put in random sequences as part of the control. So you've got the, the oligonucleotide setting off the inflammation and then random sequences which do not mitigate that. But then if we put in these uh, sequences that have been gathered from the literature that are known to be antagonistic to TLR9, um, but have not used, been used in this context yet, which is, uh, which is a, a AV delivery to uh, HEC293 cells, uh, you can see they all reduce the inflammation. And we picked one in particular, which, which is this repeating sequence TTAGGG, which is part of the human telomere, um, possibly uh, significant, but it, in this case, we're just using it as an engineering tool. And this one, as you can see in the, in the right-hand uh, plots, have a big impact on the, the, the infl inf uh, inflammation-inducing oligonucleotide plus this uh, telomere-derived oligonucleotide, that, uh, which returns it back to normal. So we want to be able to look at this in preclinical models um, where we have a uh, uh, function of dose, function of where the administration occurs, uh, we, we looked at each of these, um, intramuscular and venous and I, and we've done it with a self-complementary um, AAV model or the single-stranded AAV. So here is, again, that, that telomere sequence repeated uh, uh, three or four times uh, and inserted right next to the, uh, the ITR in this vector, that, which we're just using GFP for convenience as the uh, payload. So what happens with this telomere? It does not, it does not have any impact on, uh, any negative impact on uh, expression uh, uh, of the GFP as a function of multiplicity of infection, but it does have a huge impact on <clears throat> the production of TNF uh, here showing on the far right that the AV with the telomere brings it back down to the mock level. <clears throat> That was in vitro. This is either in vivo experiments showing similar results. Uh, liver inflammation, inflammation, again, on the far right is the effect of the telomere sequence. It's just three copies of telomere sequence on either TNF or IL-6 um, relative to both the control and to the no telomere version of the vector. And so finally, we, we can show that the actual delivery of a, a desirable um, a human gene product uh, shows improved expression. And this is in part a con consequence of lack of, uh, of the uh, innate immunity response. <clears throat> so you can see on the far right the, the increase in the, the um, human factor 9 uh, in the presence of telomere sequences, just a few uh, base pairs embedded near the ITR. We can, uh, we engineered these uh, single-stranded uh, AAV vectors uh, in, in intramuscular in, in mice, and these are some of the data here showing um, uh, reduce uh, uh, infiltration and expression, reinforcing some of the previous slides. And then the, uh, uh, this is very preliminary. Everything I've mentioned in this talk is, is unpublished. Two major studies, one on the, on the uh, mutagenesis using machine learning and this other one using, uh, looking at the effect of telomere sequences as an example of, and, and this, these are even more preliminary results using uh, a pig eye. Here, the uh, outbred pig model with a subretinal injection um, shows uh, a positive uh, response in terms of avoiding the sear uh, inflama inflammation we see in the left eye, uh, in the contralateral eye from the same uh, pig, and, uh, and followed up by uh, OCT. So the summary for the second half of the talk is that we have um, this incorporation of uh, TLR9 oligonucleotide, just three repeats of the uh, short telomere sequence, 
um, has this huge impact on, on the inflammatory response. It reduces uh, CD8 uh, T cell recruitment and increases transgene expression as we showed, showed for human factor uh, 9. The, I think the advantages in applications should be quite evident. Um, uh, we uh, have, have no reason to believe that this would have any uh, spe specific limitation to any AAV serotype or the synthetic um, uh, AAVs that I talked about in the first part of the talk. We haven't looked at every possible one, but the, 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 the sequence is so small and subtle. And we hope this will increase the safety profile for essentially every study that involves the AV vector. So this is, again, thanks to Kai Chen and uh, Tina Liu uh, and the Wies Institute at Harvard Medical School. So just uh, in summary, and hopefully we can open this up for discussion, um, the first half we talked about uh, evading, uh, we can do selection for evading or binding to specific antibodies um, by making these complex synthetic libraries. We can make up to hundreds of thousands of uh, custom designed uh, viral sequences, and we've done that. W um, by having efficient delivery, we can lower the doses. We can reduce the uh, uh, toxicity of having off-target delivery by having the surface um, engineered by a combination of mutagenesis and machine learning to reduce off-target. And then finally, the second half of the talk um, was about the innate immunity uh, via TLR9. So I open up for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for your good talk. Question? Uh, I'm Bill Andrews with Sierra Sciences. Have you used any of your tools to try to deplete the CPGs from the ITRs? We, uh, we have, I, I don't know if we have or not, uh, but the point of this uh, telomere sequence is that we can tolerate uh, CPGs not only in the ITRs, but in whatever payload where you, where you have, maybe have even less control over it. But it's a good suggestion. I'll, I'll check with my team to see if they've done that. Yeah. Yes. Nice talk, George. Uh, Jeff Elserth from Homology Medicines. Um, have you tested your uh, TTA GGG sequences in non-human primates? Uh, I, do, we do, I do not think we have tested them. In, uh, that's next. Yeah. Thanks. Very important. No doubt about it. Hi. Uh, Brian Webster. Closer so, to the mic, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the TLR9 engineered AAV, was that a reduction just in NF-kappa B? mediated cytokines or interferon alpha as well? I believe it's both. Yeah. It was? Okay. So we have another question. Over here. As ABO on therapeutics, did you test those sequences only in single-stranded AVs or self-complementary AVs too? Uh, both the SC and the SS, yeah, both of them. Works in both? Yes. Thank you. No more question from the audience? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you.